Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we're going to talk about limiting beliefs. My name is Glendon Cameron. I am with The Corporate Citizen, where we teach you how to start businesses and become a corporate citizen. And the end goal is to create 50,000 corporate citizens in the next 10 years. And what is a corporate citizen? There's a person who has a company or a collection of companies that has a net income of 250K a year. Why, why 250K a year? For me, that was life changing money. Not a million, not two million, not three million. 250, 250K a year, which will give you the ability to become an asset based millionaire very quickly within 10 years. If you get to that 250, it gives you 100K to live on, 50K to pay your taxes, 100K to invest, and you can become a big dog investor. So what we're going to talk about today is limiting beliefs. And I, I got something I got to show you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 26 car titles and I have 32. So I have one car that's financed. That would be the Mercedes drop top. So 26, I have five more titles to get. Now, why don't I show you that? There, there are many people who have been watching this car rental business journey who absolutely refuse to believe that I pay cash for these cars. Now, there's an important lesson here, very important lesson. And one person who I blocked because she kept making these comments, he's going to get off that title talk. He know he financed those cars. This is where we get into limiting beliefs. And beliefs are very, very important, very important. And this person who absolutely refused to believe that I had paid, actually, I bought 36 cars cash because uh, I sold a Porsche and I had two cars that had to go. So 34, 35 cars cash. And this person would leave these comments about how I was going to get off the title talk, how I wasn't going to be talking about because they could not believe that someone could buy 30 something cars in a matter of months and paying cash. Simply impossible, right? And this isn't a reflection upon me because. I just showed you, I got car titles. They don't give you car titles when you finance a car. They don't give them to you. Um, it was more a reflection upon that person and their belief system. This person is replete with limiting beliefs. And what they wanted to do was project their limitations upon me. And this is something funny. The same person loves our rich journey. And this person, because there's limiting beliefs and there's the deep, deep desire to believe in fantasies. She actually believed that these people started in the workforce nine years ago and retired from the workforce. Uh, they, they both have like advanced degrees. I, I know people who graduated law school at 22 and 23. So there's no way that they retired in 
nine years from the workforce. It's more like 18, 20 years. And they wanted to believe that. Why did they want to believe that? The same person, even though I am showing you proof, didn't want to believe this. And we'll talk about that. And wanted to believe that they retired in eight years. There's, there's a few things that are going on. There's this wonderful book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. Once again, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. This book was a game changer for me because it showed me how your belief system influences your life. So this person wanted to believe what I like to consider a beautiful lie. She wanted to believe a beautiful lie versus hard facts proof. Also, once again, my personality is such people either really like me or they really, really don't. And she's one of those people who just couldn't stand Glendon Cameron. She couldn't stand him. She was like, there ain't no way, you know, there ain't no way he making the money he's saying. So what? He's shown us a Porsche. So what? He's shown us the BMW. So what? He's shown us the title. So what? He lives in the million dollar house. So what? He lives in the richest neighborhood in, uh, in the South. So that don't matter. I rather believe in beautiful lies. See, here's one of the things, and I'll talk about myself right now. I used to be full of limiting beliefs, very limited beliefs. I felt that people who were rich got rich because of some secret ingredients, some secret notions. And I never felt someone like me could ever get rich because of those limiting beliefs. And once I started to shed those limiting beliefs, and once again, these limiting beliefs, they don't go away easy. It took me a few years to get rid of them because when I became a commercial office furniture salesperson, and this was about two years after reading, maybe three, three years after reading the book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, I actually had a written goal that if I lose a deal, it was my fault. Now, why did I do such a thing? I did not say that they were racist. Uh, I actually had a few clients that I didn't get the deal and I called them up and I said, hey, I'm not gonna beat you up. Could you honestly tell me where I went wrong? I mean, if you do that, like here's an exercise. If you call up three or four of your ex-girlfriends and ask them where you went wrong, and gave them the safe space to tell you the truth, this would make you grow so much as a man. It, it, it would blow your mind. And I, I gave these people a safe space and they told me what I did wrong and I corrected that and I started to do better. See, when I said, if I lost the deal, it was my fault, that gave me control. If I was like, they're racist, they're, this was stuff that was out of my control because I created my belief system where I was in control, which means I could influence the outcome. That's what happened because I went, I remember nice little couple, they had a waste disposal company, advanced disposal. And they told me that this other guy brought this came in, came in and I actually fixed those and going forward, that was a reason because our company, we didn't have an artist to do drafts and prints. So I actually spent my own money to get someone to do my prints for me. And whenever I did someone the proposal, this guy charged me like 100, 150 bucks to do the prints. It only took him like five minutes, but this won me a lot of jobs. And because I set up my belief system for me to win, that's what I did. See, you are unaware that many of the beliefs that you hold, many of the things that you think, um, they were influenced by your environment. Your belief system, like look, look, here's the thing. Do you know your parents chose your friends? I was like, wait a minute, my parents had nothing to do with this. I was in school, I met these kids. No, your parents chose your friends. When your parents decided to move to whatever neighborhood town they moved into, that moment that they made that decision, they chose your friends. Because when they decided to live wherever they live, this set up a whole chain of ramifications. They chose your friends, 
they chose um, your economic, economic, social economic class. They chose that for you. <clears throat> your parents did a lot of things for you. And this is why I'm saying, and I know the red pill and the big toe men are going to throw stuff at the screen. One of the best gifts that you can give your children is a stay at home parent. I know a lot of people don't believe in that, but if you are a man and you're following the corporate citizen path where you're building a business, you're making yourself economically viable before you get married and you give the woman that you marry the ability to stay home with your children, this can create someone like me. I had a stay at home parent. And this is one of the reasons, because, you know, even though I had limiting beliefs, I had a really good foundation. I learned how to read. I learned how to have high self-esteem. I was loved. I, my grandmother told me she was proud of me. I had all of these important things during the formative years that was able, because essentially what you get in your formative years revisits you as you get older. You get that between you know a few months up to about 10 right you'll get that and then you'll go off and you will be introduced to other people and whoever you spend the most time around that influences your behavior and that influences your choices but once you get 27 to 30 that stuff starts to come back because it's already there and it's very important now if you never had that strong, formative foundation, you have nothing to come back to. And once I came back to it, because I came back to it when I was 32, and that's where my journey began. I was 32, I was living in a boarding house, and I was starting to have these conversations with myself. I knew that I could do better, I just didn't know how. And I feel that's where a lot of you are. A lot of you are full of amazing potential. You could do many, many different things, but you don't know how. And one of the first things you got to do is clean up your mental environment because I, I, I'll speak on this. Let's say you meet the love of your life. You're a man. You meet this woman. She's simply amazing, right? But because you have a habit of treating women like hoes, even though this is a love of your life, this is a good woman, because you have a habit of treating women like hoes, you treat her like a hoe. And you continue to see other women. And she gets tired of it and she leaves. See, she didn't leave because you didn't love her. She left because of how you treated her. And you treated her that way because that was your habit of treating women. That's what I'm talking about, cleaning up your mental environments. Because if you have bad habits, you can have the best people in your life, you can have the best opportunities, but because you have a habit of treating people like crap, not checking on people, not, not following up, not, you just simply cannot realize your greatness, your potential, because you have a shoddy, trashy mental environment. One of the things, and I'm gonna tell you this, this is something I used to talk about in my old videos. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna share this with you. I used to wake up with a morning routine to meditate, and then I would perform this exercise. And this is how messed up my mental environment was. I had a mental exercise where I was diving off of a high board into a pool of water, right? And I was messing it up. Once again, this, is, this wasn't me actually on a high board diving into a live pool. This was a image, imagery that I created in my mind. And because my mental environment was so messed up, I was messing up on the dive. I would hit the water wrong. Because, you know, when you dive, you're supposed to put your hands like this and you break the water with your hands like this. Because when you hit water at a high rate of speed, water is hard. It can hurt. So if you don't hit the water, then that was flop I was, and I was doing this was mentally this was mentally I was messing up so once I started to clean up that because I would perform this exercise every morning and then one morning 
I would leap off the diving board and I would enter the water seamlessly and I would come up and I started to hit to do this correctly. I was cleaning up my mental environment because guys, I know that you want to secure the bag, right? But you're not going to secure the bag if you have a trashy mental environment. You're not going to secure the bag if you don't feel that you deserve the bag. This is another thing. I've lived in this neighborhood 12 years. And the first time I joined Lifetime Gym, and it's the kind of gym where people spend two grand for workout gear. It's that kind of gym. They don't just come in there in t-shirts and shorts. They have active wear. They, they go out and buy exclusive gear to work out in. And I was in there in my sweatpants and my t-shirt, and I felt some kind of way. I felt like I didn't belong. That's how I was feeling. And as I matriculated into this environment, because I lived here, I started to see certain things. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I then stayed here about three, four years. Then I joined Lifetime again because there, not, there was a good gym. There was a gym of Buckhead off Roswell Road. I was a member of that gym. Then it closed and there are just not a lot. That's like the only gym that's around here that's close. And I joined it again. And this time I had my little active wear. And I actually felt like I belonged. And this is kind of Jim, the Kimbe Mutombo worked out there, some rappers. I believe Derek Jackson. Yes, that Derek Jackson. I think he worked out there. Because I saw this dude, because Derek Jackson in real life, he's huge. He's huge. He's like 6'6. He's a huge dude. And uh, NBA players, NFL players worked out of this gym. It was a high profile gym. And the second time I felt like I belonged because I had mentally matriculated. And one of the things I love about this neighborhood, and this is how I know that I'm gonna be driving the Porsche in my retirement. There is this couple, I would assume they're in their 60s or 70s, man and woman, and they have that, what I like to call the Michael Douglas look. If you remember the streets of San Francisco, an old television show, Michael Douglas, he had that long hair. Michael Douglas looked wealthy, right? And this dude, he's an older guy. He has Michael Douglas hairstyle. The woman, you could tell, you know, she's an older lady, but you could tell she is beautiful. I'm not going to say she was beautiful. She's still beautiful. So when she was younger, she was a seriously hot mama, right? And this Michael Douglas dude and this woman who still, you know, even though she's in her 70s, she's still beautiful. They roll around here in a drop top Porsche. And one day I was next to him and I was actually in my Porsche and uh, she, she had her hand on the door and I could see all these diamond rings. And I was like, you're twinkling in the Porsche. She said, yes, I am. And it's great. And they, they have such a wonderful attitude. And these are old people driving a drop top Porsche wearing diamonds. Uh, I've seen him get out, you know, he, he's got a very stylish couple, very, very stylish. And this is my environment and this is what I see and this is what I aspire to. When I'm like 70, 80 years old, I'm gonna be in a drop top Porsche. I'm gonna be driving, you know, I'm gonna be stylish. I'm gonna have me a beautiful bay on the side. This is the mental projection that I have. This is how I see my life going forward. And this is one of the things I learned in the power of your subconscious mind is programming. You can program yourself for success or you can program yourself for failure. And many people are programming themselves for failure because of these limiting beliefs. And once again, I'm going to say it, it's not your fault that you have these limiting beliefs. You're completely unaware of how this thing works. So it's not your fault. You didn't do anything intentional. It's just you were unseasoned. No one. This is why I'm giving you this game, because if you want to be a millionaire in the United States of America, guess what? You can become a millionaire in the United States of America. But you must first believe that you can become a millionaire, just like. This clown could not believe, even though 
I'm showing you proof. Let's talk about that. There's a mental conflict, and I'm going to speak on terms of race. I am black, and I have a good friend, and we've had this conversation. Many black people need therapy. When you see me here on YouTube, a black man acting a fool sometimes. Sometimes I act a fool because I, I was raised properly, but acting a fool is fun. You see me up here cussing people out, doing what I need to do, do saying what I want to say, living my life on my terms, and still getting the paper. And that is a big conflict for many of you who have been socialized that you have to act a certain way to get money. And I am proof positive that you can be acting a damn fool and still get rich. Still get rich. And, you know, I do have character. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat you. I'm not going to say things that's true. That's why when I sell my corporate papers, I'll tell you, you guys are looking at a two to three year journey. I'm not saying this is going to be in a few weeks or a few months unless you do a service business. And we'll be talking about that a little later. But from the race perspective, I feel that black YouTubers have it much harder than their white counterparts because so many black people are full of self-loathing. The woman who could not believe that I spent cash on these cars and she commented on it several times before I blocked her, she is full of self-loathing. She doesn't believe that a black person can achieve greatness. She is completely unaware of her belief system. She wants to believe in beautiful lies versus the absolute painful truth. Because here's the thing, guys. You can get rich in America. You can get very rich in America if you align your belief system with who you are. And limiting beliefs are one of the, you know, going back to the therapy. I went to therapy. After my divorce, I was in, went to therapy. I talked to someone and I learned some exercises. I feel that a lot of people need therapy. A lot of people need to sit in the chair. They need to unwrap these things out their mind. They need to talk it out with someone. Uh, the church, and eh, the church ain't going to help you. I feel that a lot of people need therapy because it's a self-esteem issue. And I had very low self-esteem at one point in my life. Very low self-esteem. And now that I have extremely high self-esteem, this is why I act the way that I do because I feel that I deserve this money. I feel that I deserve this lifestyle. I feel and I own it and I walk it and I live it and I talk it. So guys, you got to work on your limiting beliefs because your limiting beliefs, just like I said, you can meet the best woman in the world because your belief system and habits are janky, jacked up. You can actually ruin that situation because of who you are in the habits that you have. Once again, I have a habit of success. Um, let's see. One of my habits of success is working from a written agenda. And I've transferred this to my auto business. Every time I do something, I write it down. I work from a written agenda. And in my office, I have a whiteboard. And on the whiteboard is the cars that are in the shop. And every time a car goes in the shop, I put it on the board. I put what's wrong with it. And when the car comes back, I erase it. So this keeps me focused. Like right now, I have three cars in the shop. I have two cars in the body shop. I have one car for mechanical issues. And I have three cars that are wrecked. So this is six cars. <laughs> I'm like, so... I'm in the position, like, end of the month, I'm getting two of those cars back. Two of those cars back. So that's going to, right now, with the six cars, that gives me 25. So end of the month, I will be in the position to rent 27, maybe 28 cars. And th this, this is one of the things that I, look, I think about it because... One of the things is last month I made $21,500 in the car rental business and I didn't have my full fleet. I had cars in the parking lot. I couldn't rent out because they didn't have GPS, all, all kinds of stuff. So working from a written agenda every day, I, I write down what I'm going to do. I, I write down <clears throat> how I'm going to work, things I'm going to work on. 
and I operate from a written agenda. This is a habit of success. Whenever I write it down, I was like, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. Things get done, things get done, man. And when things get done, you can move on to the next thing and you can do more and you can do more and you can do more. So guys, you gotta work on your limiting beliefs because as a black YouTuber, I see a lot of it in your comments. Because another thing is, many of you, because you don't actually feel that you're gonna be successful in real life, you lie about your so-called success in the comments. Because you want to win an argument, which I think is asinine. But hey, we're getting ready to crank up some stuff in the corporate papers. If you're in the corporate toolbox, you're gonna to get access to the YouTube training that's gonna start next week. And for you guys who bought the corporate papers, I'm going to give you an in a deal on this as well. So you can get into the YouTube training because that's a very big important part of my success. And this is why so many people like Anton Daniels, the lead attorney, uh, mediocre tutorials. This is why so many people are going hard on YouTube because YouTube can open the door. YouTube can open up so many doors for you. So many doors, so many doors. So go ahead, get in the corporate papers. The link is below and I will see you guys in the next one.